In this video, we will discuss about population inversion and optical pumping. Question will come like this. What is population inversion? How optical pumping is done using three level laser? Or you may ask question, uh, discuss the working of three level laser. So for population inversion, you may award four marks and for optical pumping, you will, have, you will be awarded four marks. So what is population inversion? In most of the materials, uh, normally the number of atoms in the lower energy state is higher than the higher energy state. This is the lower energy state and this is the higher energy state. So the number of atoms in the lower energy state is higher than the number of atoms in the, um, in the higher energy state. So why the number of atoms in lower energy state is higher than the number of atoms in the higher energy state, let us discuss. From density of atoms, we know that the number of atoms, suppose the number of atoms in the upper level, that is the uh, higher energy state is uh, n e2, e2 for the energy state and n for the number. And the number of atoms in the lower energy state or the lower level at the lower level is equal to n e1 e1 for the energy state and n is the number in thermal equilibrium the number of atoms occupying a state of energy e is determined by the exponential boltzmann factor that is uh, you have a relation n e that is the number of atoms in any energy state is proportional to e to the power minus e divided by kt here k is the boltzmann constant and t is the absolute temperature and this is called the exponential Boltzmann factor. So for the energy state E1, you can write N E1 proportional to E to the power minus E1 divided by KT. And for the energy state E2, you will write N E2 proportional to E to the power minus E2 divided by KT. So when this will be equal, you have to multiply a constant. Here also you have to multiply a constant. Here also you have to multiply a constant. And if you divide these two equations, n e2 divided by n e1, then what will be your result? e to the power minus e2 by kt divided by e to the power minus e1 by kt. And this factor, right hand side factor can be written as e to the power minus e2 minus e1 divided by kt. Here kt is called the mean energy of agitation of an atom at temperature T. In this equation you see uh, E2 is greater than E1. We know the higher energy state E2 and low energy state E1. E2 is greater than E1. If E2 is greater than E1, this factor will be equal to positive and this will be equal to E minus a positive quantity divided by Kt. So, what will be the value of an e2 divided by an e1? an e2 divided by an e1 must be less than 1 because this will be a negative, negative quantity. So, an e2 will be, if an e2 divided by an e1 is less than 1, then an e2 will be less than an e1. So, what conclusion you get? So, from this we can uh, conclude that the there is always be lower atoms in the higher energy levels than the lower energy level n e2 is the number of atoms in the higher energy level n e1 is the number of atoms in the uh, lower energy level so number of atoms in the higher energy level is always less than the number of atoms in the lower energy level so when the temperature is increased more atoms will be pumped up to the level e2 this is generally happens. So from this discussion we conclude that normally the number of atoms in the lower energy state is higher than the number of atoms in the higher energy state you see from this picture and these atoms absorb photon and go up to higher energy state when you give some photon and these atoms give um, um, get some energy get energy from outside and go to higher energy state. And this is called the stimulated emission. Okay, this is called the stimulated emission. And uh, in this case, 
sorry not stimulated emission absorption this is called the absorption and stimulated emission in this case will be weak as we have discussed in the previous video about stimulated emission in stimulated emission the number of atoms in the higher energy state will be should be more but here you see the number of atoms in the higher energy state is less so the stimulated emission in this case will be weak and the amplification is not possible as we have discussed in the previous video the for the amplification of laser stimulated emission is uh, required but here you cannot have stimulated emission but uh, here you see the higher energy state have more non number of atoms than the lower energy state so here stimulated emission can takes place so when a higher energy state has more number of atoms than the low energy state we say population inversion has taken place so for the population inversion the um, atoms um, should have more number of atoms should have in higher energy state than um, the lower energy state to sustain laser action we need an arrangement which ensures population inversion between the states e1 and e2 so remember for uh, for laser action to takes place you need population inversion that means more number of atoms must have in the higher energy state than low energy state now we will discuss about how optical pumping is done using three level laser or we will discuss the working of three level laser so this is the basic diagram for the working of three level laser here you have three energy levels e1 e2 and e3 and e1 is your ground state e2 is your metastable state and e3 is your excited state or short lived excited state as we have discussed in the previous video if you give uh, energy from outside then the atom in the ground state they will absorb energy and go to the higher energy state so atoms from the ground state e1 are pumped up to an excited state uh, e3 by absorption of energy from an intense light source but the atoms cannot remain here in the excited state the atoms uh, will come back to the uh, to, to, to this metal stable state that is from the energy state e3 the atoms decay rapidly to a state of energy e2 for laser action to occur this state must be metastable and we have discussed in the previous video that the uh, the life period the lifetime of the atoms in this metastable state is more that is of the order of 10 to the power minus 3 second so for laser action to takes place the atoms must be in this metastable state for laser to occur this state must be metastable it must have a relatively long mean life so the energy state e2 become more heavily populated than the state e1 causing population inversion so i have told you that for the laser action to takes place population inversion is necessary so here you see the state e2 have more atoms and state e1 have less atoms so population inversion will takes place so as a result of which a stimulated emission of this metastable state occurs which causes the production of laser light there are various materials in which three level uh, laser action takes place like a ruby laser we will discuss in next video how in ruby laser uh, the three level laser action takes place in the next video we will discuss about a problem on three level laser thank you